Good morning, everyone. Good welcome morning. To, welcome to another session of hand built pottery and sculpture. My name is Kimberly Wright. All right, last session we had a we had a uh, actual discussion and a demonstration on how to make a lip for a for a dish due to the fact that you all had uh, the first project that we did in this class was making a lidded or unlidded vessel. However, in the future, if you decide to make some type of piece with a lid, now you know how to put a lip on it so it just won't particularly like slide off. All right, our second project was or is on uh, the Mobius, which is a strip loop or band uh, created by a German, and it ends up being a mathematic uh, um, formula. So, uh, so far at this time, I have received some people's uh, vessel, fruit or vegetable vessel, and I've received some people's Mobius. However, there are some of you out there which you know who you are that I have not received anything from you. So I just wanted to say that to say that today we're moving on to our third project. That does not mean that you cannot complete the first and second one. However, I do want you to not rush, but apply yourself so that you can catch up with the actual project. However, everybody is just where they are in life and it's not a competition, but just do your best. And it's so wonderful and great to see all of your lovely faces. And so today, what we will be doing to cover the agenda for our class is to, uh, I'm gonna introduce and discuss what I would like for you all to do for your third project. And I'm gonna be introducing the fourth project. So if you do not have paper and pen or paper and pencil right now, please, move somewhere, get that if you need to, whatever you got to do, take your time, because I'm going to still be talking about a couple other things. Um, so for anybody that has turned in anything, I have not fired anything yet. However, I will be firing something uh, this week, which will be Friday or early next week. So once again, I will be contacting you all to see when you can get your pieces that will be in the second process of the completion, which is BISQ, B-I-S-Q-U-E. And so after that, you know you all will be glazing. All right. So uh, also, if we have anybody that wants to share uh, a particular project today, you're more than welcome to do that as well. So if everybody has their pen and paper right now, what we're going to do is, um, so at this time, if you are able to, you can definitely unmute yourselves and just be mindful of any background noise in your home. If something comes up where someone comes to your door or someone comes to your room, starts to make noise, mute yourself. And if you forget, don't worry because I will be muting you. So another thing is, um, if you have, don't forget that our uh, classes will be recorded and put on YouTube. So if you do not consent to having your video or face recorded and published on YouTube, then you need to turn your video off. However, be mindful still that this is a really uh, fun um, time for us and a blessing to be able to share with each other. And a lot of people do want to see you because this is the only way we're able to socialize and have stay active, have our class going on. So don't ever get so um, content, whatever, life has going on for you right now, especially if it's good. But even things that are not so pleasant or bad that's going on in your life, life is all about ups and downs. And so even though we are in this pandemic phase or for whatever reason in our life, uh, things 
this too shall pass and things are always going to change. So just continue to go with the flow and stay youthful and in the know of what's going on currently in the world. You can do it because you're also beautiful and young right now. There's no reason to get old per se. Keep living as long as you can and being strong and just don't get so content in something so good because life is about ups and downs and things are going to change all the time. Just stay strong as you keep on moving. All right. So, let me get my apparatus. I need to turn this phone off in case it starts for me. And what I want to share with you all, have you ever seen these I want to say particularly like cooking shows that are on cable or Netflix or we have so many outlets for television these days. But however, I mean like cooking shows where they have like people making cakes, uh, not like basically the meals, but more, more like cakes or desserts. Or have you seen any shows where people are uh, competing to make clothing like a fashion type of show? If you've ever seen these shows when the people, when the, the contestants are given their um, challenge, usually sometimes I like the shows that show where the, the, the party, the two groups that's on the team or one individual person has to draw a rough draft of what they plan on creating. And actually, once they start drawing those drawings, you've seen some illustrated so quick and cool that I know that those were computer generated. But however, on some of the fashion shows, you see some people start sketching up a dress or whatever they plan on making. And also some people add color. So if you want to write that down, the project is going to include that particular style. I would like everybody not just to doodle or scribble what they plan on making on the paper. I want you to eloquently try to draw it out and even add color to it as well. However, if you're not able to add color, you can draw lines out and say what color you plan on for something to be on your piece. It's basically a map for you to stick to and what your, your piece is going, uh, you plan on having your piece come out to be. So the reason why we're doing that is you want to write down um, abstraction. Abstraction. I'm going to type it in the chat in case somebody can't hear what I'm saying. However, abstraction is spelled A B S T R A C I. I sorry. A B S T R A C T I O N. Just type that in the chat if everybody can see it. Abstraction allows man to see with his mind what he cannot see physically with his eyes. I'm going to say that again. Abstraction allows man to see with his mind, your mind, what you're not able to see with your eyes. Okay. So what you're gonna be creating this, you can just go ahead and put three if you want to, because that's your third project, and it's gonna be an abstract play art piece. Your fourth project is gonna be a DIY. Do it yourself. And believe it or not, this abstract piece is a DIY. You're basically doing what you want to do, but you have to stick to the parameters of what an abstract piece of art is. So right now we're going to cover that portion. All right. Give me a second. You may like abstract art outright or hate it or not understand exactly what it is. But since you uh, come on this class today, that means you are definitely curious and you are about this, you are very curious about pottery and this perplexing art form that evades the definition of artistic classification. Art has been a way around for 
sorry, abstract art has been around for well over 100 years. Some might even assert that abstraction started with, with the cave painting of thousands of years ago and has held its own against changing art movements, manifestos, and testimonials for all these centuries. The definition, abstraction literally means the distancing of an idea from objective reference. That means in the visual arts, pulling a depiction away from any literal representational reference points. You can also call abstract art non-representational art. Non-representation. What I mean that by that, it does not, it's not necessarily, if you see a hand, you know what a hand looks like, it's not going to be looking necessarily just like a hand. You could, you could have uh, a bump with a, a, a ball with five bumps on it and say it was a hand. You could have a, a slasher. I don't know. It depends on you. All right, let's keep going. The continuing interest in abstract art lies in its ability to inspire our curiosity about the reaches of our imagination and the potential for us to create something completely unique in the world. Y'all know a lot of stuff is not new under the sun. If you think you, some people, like some of these young people who have uh, rap music out, Sometimes you hear a tune, some of these young people hear like a tune on it that sounds so good and authentic down to their soul and they love it. They'll come telling you, oh, grandmama, or mama, you hear this song and you laugh because they sample the temptations off of it. You have heard that song a million times. Like they reuse tunes over, now we're making movies, going back, remaking all movies that was 20 years ago. I think they just made a new Karate Kid movie. The, the two guys that was fighting on Karate Kid, they old now. I think it's called Kai or something, but kind of funny to me, that particular movie. However, a major obstacle to making an abstract artwork is the barrier in your mind. The barrier to what they say, you have a barrier in your mind. Your mind tends to play on what you, what, what is on the outside of you. We generally work with what's on the outside of us, uh, what we see in the world. But there's so much going on in the in our inner selves, the inner, the, the parts of life that you cannot see, which would be like a spiritual, you know, that type of thing. All right. A major obstacle to making abstract artwork is the barrier in your mind that questions whether abstract art is a legitimate art form, legitimate for you at least. This block may be because you still wonder, is abstract art really art at all? Possibly you think you have to master realism before you can work abstractly. Or it could be that you worry your friends and family want to prove. So, Basically, in abstract, you can take so many risks and you want to, uh, so the first thing you're going to do before you start your project is uh, kind of rough draft or write a clean, draw a clean drawing of in your mind what you basically kind of like plan on doing. Tomorrow's class, I'm going to demonstrate with my project pretty much um, what I'm going to be doing that might give you some kind of insight per se, since we have uh, two sessions of the class. So I decided to put my piece on this watercolor uh, paper just because it's like a full square. And for whatever reason, I just feel like I want to, once I draw my abstract art that I'm going to do a play, I'm going to, uh, painted in watercolor for some reason. All right, let's see. I think I have a couple of announcements. Quickly, I don't want to tell too much of people's business, but it is like current events. I have um, a couple of people. I think they said put a message out. All right. Um, Let's see. Deborah Bell, congratulations on your beautiful new grandson, Deborah Valentine. Woo! 
They changed the name. They changed the name. It's not Ezra Valentine. It is, uh, go ahead. I'm going to tell you the same because now he's got four names. It's amazing. Let me find it. I can't even remember it. It's going to take me a while to even remember the baby's name. But it is Ezra. It is Ezra. Congratulations on your grandchild. Thank you. I would like to say that uh, Mr. Wayman Hackney is not with us today online. He wanted me to tell everybody hello and just y'all keep up everything for him. But he said he know all of y'all going to be missing him. That's what he told me. <laughs> <laughs> But he uh, does Red Cross Relief, and he told me that he's in Florida right now doing Red Cross Relief, I guess, for the hurricane and stuff. So that's very positive and that's a really good thing. Uh, please keep prayers out and blessings out and support our sister, Miss Paulette McKinney. Her sister is not well and in hospice. Miss Paulette, we love you. Thank you. And uh, Miss. Linda Edwards just had a passing in her family. Her brother passed. However, even if there's some people out there we might not mention. Hi, Mr. Cumberlanda. He said nothing. Fanny Cumberlanda. <laughs> okay, maybe his screen looks stuck. However, even though some people, a lot of people out there, you, you out there have hardships or whatever, you know, sometimes to don't be afraid to speak out to others because a closed mouth don't get fed. But however, that's how we can uplift and support you. Sometimes going through things on your own um, puts a lot of stress and oh yes, yes, hurt in your system. And sometimes it's good to talk to somebody or even just telling somebody just to get it out. You know, like that's right. So, we here to support you in your positive endeavors and things that are not going so well. So anybody have anything they want to share, please do that. If anybody got any projects, oh, yes, ma'am. Hold on, I want to tell you his name. His name is Ezra Ozias Apollo McBride. I'm like, what? And the, what that means is uh, Ozias is um, salvation from the sun. Ezra is a biblical prophet that was a helper. Apollo is the Roman god of sunlight, prophecy, music, and poetry. So I said, wow, we've got a lot. Of, they, they put on that little baby boy to live up to. That's right. But uh, that's his that's full wrong name. Wrong <laughs> yeah, we got to promote uh, our people to live that's out right. the best of themselves. That's right. All right. So the last class we had, I mean, yes, I trust me, I always just have to say this because sometimes I just feel so bad. You know, I don't know, it's nothing to feel bad about. But as an instructor, y'all know I never in, in class, the class said it, I never really make a lot of things. I just try to use my time to actually help y'all bring y'all pieces to fruition. But I don't want to be seen like a show off. But actually, the reason why I show my pieces is so that y'all can see. How things are supposed to be smooth, yeah. get uh, a clear understanding of maybe how some things are supposed to look. So this particular piece is the piece that I did last week that uh, had that lip. So this was the actual container. The cylinder. Mm -hmm. Yes, the cylinder. And I put a little line that I drew with the Pro Tool on the bottom. But I rolled these lines in the piece with that rolling tool that have the little crimps on them. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes. And so the actual lid that had the lip on it, I was going to take it to the facility, but I said I might as well keep it so that everybody can see it. If I kept it on this dish because yes. I was getting my shape. So when it dried, I just said, let me keep it on there so it won't lose the shape. But anyway, I don't need that anymore. And I kept the paper towel on it so it wouldn't dry. Oh, but anyway, oh, that's the lip in the inside. Yeah. Yes. And I ended up cutting a nice line around the edges, per se. I ended up putting a line like that's at the bottom of that piece. I put a stem on there with the leaf. As you can see, I got a little piece of paper in there holding my leaf up. 
that's the leaf. This was my handle that I put on there. And then the stem of the leaf goes around to a ladybug about to take flight. That's why it's got its wings up. Beautiful. Beautiful. All Can right. you show the lip again underneath, please? Yes, perfect. Thank you. So y'all know that the lips is supposed to, when you get your coil, once again, you roll your coil, I made this uh, vessel first. When you get the coil, you're supposed to line the lip in the inside of the piece. Somebody said on the top, it's not on the top because that's what you're trying to keep from sliding out. And it wasn't on the outside, it's on the inside. And then I'm gonna stick that on that dish. And it's like, actually it's like, I'm sticking it right and left, but it's not moving because it's sucked right to the, the lip part. Yes. So that's Beautiful. it. Beautiful. Thank y'all. But anyway, y'all can do the same thing. You can do that with some of your uh, clay that you have left over. Sometimes it's up to you. All right. So I wanna see if you can see any of these things. All right, an uh, abstraction. So if you want to write down some of these words, feel free because it can help you stay on track as it pertains to what you're supposed to be doing. All right. Abstract is dis disassoci disassociated from any specific instance. It's difficult to understand. It's abstruse. It's insufficiently factual, meaning like it's not a fact. It's insufficient from being a fact, Mr. Van Dyke Howard. When you ask me, what's the difference between the abstract and the Mobius? Why are you doing your head like that? No <laughs> <laughs> way. All right. So. Between the abstract. abstract is a thing or state. I'm going to uh, uh, read a sentence. His imagination had so abstracted him. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. All right, y'all be careful with the y'all be careful with the mute yourself if you got to all right, anyway, that probably was a mistake, I'm sure. All right. His imagination had so abstracted him that his name was called twice before he answered. Anyway, I want you all to uh, look up abstract play art. You'll see a lot of, uh, what do you call it, examples. I can't get that thing done. What's wrong with me that I can't get that done? Just, I'm about to give up on it. I'm going to do this so I don't make a mistake and knock it over. And there's a piece in one of my books. It's called Cultured Clearing. Cultured Clearing. It's by an artist called Tyler Lotz. It says, my sculpture is a speculative response to the many ways in which we remake nature to suit our own purposes. In question, it questions the assumption that the artificial could be acceptable, could be an acceptable stand-in for the real in regard to human interaction with our natural world. You heard what they said. And this is the actual piece. Wow. Wow. But if you ask me, it looks like a colon, like some intestines. It sure does. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> and does it have color? Does it have color? It is. It was like a, I can, let me go back, sorry. Right here, these nodules are like some muddled type of blues, dark blues. Okay. These two light blues, and then it goes into like, like I guess it would be a silver or white or gray. Okay. Sometimes oh. 
they have some kind of little metal knots on the end. But actually, it would be hard to mess up back then, wouldn't it? <laughs> but it, would, <laughs> it doesn't have to look like anything anybody else has or has ever done. That's a good thing. <laughs> Let me share another one with you. This is. Uh, uh, it looks like a man's sperm. All different kinds. Okay. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> like swimming all around. That would be. Yeah. I can see that. I can see how you can see that. <laughs> so art always. Everybody who looks at your views, your art will always have like different perspectives. Everybody even have different perspectives from responding to uh, different cues of what people say. They're, I don't know, everybody's just different. So people don't see things the same way. All right. This one is called Pagoda, P-A-G-O-D-A. -A. It's made by a man named Mark Luto, Luto. It says he makes sculptures that refuse to plainly identify themselves. While their identities may be unnameable, they are distinct compositive forms suggesting transition, temporal, cultural, male and female nature and artifice. That's what you heard. This is <laughs> Oh, wow. That is nice though. Like a horn, yeah. Mm -hmm. it looks like a horn, but it has it does like a horn. <laughs> mm -hmm. It also looks like a, a snail. Um, yeah, a snail shell, yeah. mm -hmm. shell of a snail. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really nice. It's a nice
colors and textures. Can it be an exaggeration of something to make it abstract? As long as it's in my head, right? Yes. Okay. So, it's just an example. Even if something like this, say if I was making, say if one of you was making my face, right? And you made my face. But this would be representation. It's just like me. Imagine, do you think I can, I can only stretch my face so far like this, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. You are beautiful. What is that again for, y'all? Don't do that again. Yes. <laughs> we get the gist. <laughs> just saying, really, if I stretch my face, this is a fact. I can stretch my face this far, right? Yeah. Well, like some kind of way you took the clay and you stretched it across. I yeah. don't know. That's something that you've never walked around and seen somebody face. That's right. Clay. So that would make it abstract. Something mm -hmm. that right. you've never seen, but maybe something that came out of your imagination. You could have been like, oh, I dreamed about my granddaddy. And when he was walking down the hallway, his body parts start coming to loose. I don't Hello. know. <laughs> okay. That's something that it's a nightmare. That's something that goes into abstraction. All right. Okay. Anybody else got any questions? <clears throat> to uh, give some more insight. Is this a uh, project abstract art? Say that again. Is this our next project, the Abstract Art? Yes, the third project is called Abstraction. Okay. Now, even though you are doing an abstraction, your abstraction has to have a title or a name. Just like I told you these people had a title or a name, you need a title and a name. You need a page that's rough draft but looks like a piece of art that you drew what you plan on making on the paper and try to stick to your paper, making what you actually drew. If you're not gonna actually color your artwork on the paper, you wanna draw lines from each component to say this is gonna be pink or this is gonna be yellow. And I also want you to write down on that page, for example, this is just an example. This is not my artwork. However, say if this was the piece that I turned in for my abstraction. You see it's about three colors on here. I want you to draw a line if you're not going to color that purple. Draw a line and say purple. Draw a line and say black. Draw a line and say red. But I also want you to describe, say, the little dish in the middle represents a, a, a lily pad in the pond. And this is the pun, but it's actually not a real pun. It's a reflection from the sun. I don't know. I need to, since, since our uh, abstraction or abstract art is, is way beyond anything that you could probably imagine, especially because it's in somebody else's head, I want you to explain to the viewer or the audience what you were trying to portray. So if you had two drips, somebody won't say, oh, I know what that is. That's two drips. You might say, no, it's not. That was two, two turds. I don't know. I'm just saying. You have to explain your work. So um, abstraction like poetry does not dictate a clear narrative, but rather quietly offers a fragment, a piece of a mysteriously familiar narrative. Uh, the prominent use of abstraction allows you to distill and better communicate your emotions and ideas about life. For example, what if you had this vision when you was in church before? Like, how could you, if you ever had a vision in life, how could you portray that so that we all could see 
possibly what you might have saw or explained in some kind of way. Now, nowadays, our uh, abstract art is not just flat. You have two-dimensional abstract art, three-dimensional abstract art. Uh, abstract art is connected to uh, realism, you know, because it could be you could be telling some kind of story like I was just telling you, although you might have a face, but I stretched it and it's something that you don't ever see. You know what I'm saying? So you might have a hand. Somebody say, oh, I can recognize the hand on that, but what if on each finger, like these were roots from the ground and maybe you had a house built on top of this finger or mm. a scraper mm. or a tree. You see what I'm saying? I'm not really sure, but go by something that you felt or you imagined and even go back to your childhood. Maybe something that you always dreamt, dreamt of, but that didn't seem really real. Like, I guess I hear sometimes in songs, children always say, I wish I could live. Uh, I think I used to dream about stuff like this when I was little. It's so crazy to dream if you could actually live in a world where everything was made out of sweets and candy. Can I ask you a question? Say that again. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. That tall object that you made look like a statue. Can you make that and put a hand on top of it? I don't want you to make what nobody else made. I want you to make what you it, 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 What I'm saying, it didn't have a hand on it. <laughs> 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 yes, sir, but uh, if that's what you feel like making, then go for it, Mr. Kamalanda. <laughs> like, but the first thing, what I want you to do first is still, I want you to look online and look at some examples of abstract art. Please look up examples of abstract art. All right. So I have another piece to share. It's called, is anybody got any pieces they want us to look at, they want to share? Any artwork? Don't have any. Say what? Are we going to have an art show? Yes, uh, so Jamal has Jamal Jones has been assigned to do something else for a little while, but when he uh, returns back online, then we are going to uh, start again before when we, we've been doing these Zoom classes are really, uh, I want to say since March, probably or April. However, um, me and Jamal started a, an exhibit that on Tuesdays, every last Tuesday of the month, you are able to show any artwork that you have that you've completed or done. And we hold it up in front of the screen and talk about it. And also we are going to create uh, like something that you can look up on YouTube and it's going to be like a slideshow and you all are able to feature your artwork. But we're going to be thinking probably nice portraits or if you already have a nice portrait of your piece that you can send it, we're going to be ha making a slide show, sort of like that CD that we had of the art show a uh, while back at Darnell. We're going to be making a slide show to feature art and that type of thing. All right, this next piece is called Revolve. Revolve. R-E-V-O-L-V-E. Would you sp sp uh, what was that again, Kim? Revolve? Revolve. Okay. Like, a, like a revolving door. Okay. Revolve. Anyway, this person made four dishes, it looks like. And this is what they made. It's called Revolve. Ah. Oh, that's cute. That's nice. That's it's nice. You see how they join, but they come apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So even when sometimes, I don't know if you've been thinking already, an extraction was something kind of messy looking, but now you see that looks really clean mm -hmm. and neat, but it has some form. Remember those words I gave you all? Mm -hmm. It has different form. It's got shape different form and picture. shape. Yes, so it makes it like an abstraction. And the way that you put all this together, it fits together. It looks really nice. So the sky is the limit. That's why I said this project is sort of like a DIY, do it yourself, because you ask actually doing what you want to do, but you are uh, sticking to the parameters of the project or the rules of the project as well. One other thing is this person made something called the Madonna face vessel. Madonna face vessel. It's hard to see. It's hard. I can't tell. And the face is in the clay. Yes, his face is in the bowl. Mm. Wow. Back just a little bit or something. Hold it back. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's bad. The faces wow. are like the faces are like poking out the bowl, like it, it was on the up in the inside pushing out or something. Mm -hmm. And they're small, little small faces. Yes. They're mm -hmm. really they're small and they're all around the piece. Mm -hmm. So. Let's go here for a second. How about this piece right here is called Hunter Stamps. Let's see if I can, y'all can even see this. You see that? Anybody oh, see that? Yeah, that's nice. It's and called it's Hunter. A lion with a, uh, lock. Say that again. It looks like a lion's face with locks. Actually, just bananas. Pieces all drip together to me. Yeah, locks hanging down. This person has a series of something called Hunter stamps. That's another one. Hunter stamps. I don't know what it is. How about this piece? A dragon's wing. A uh, who? <laughs> dragon's wing. Um, Two birds. A sausage biscuit. Oh, hold on. Y'all can't see good. One second. <laughs> you can't see that good. No, that's work. Yeah. Okay, forget about it. Let's see it. Oh. The layer. Forget about that. We just be us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody have anything else to show? Because I guess right now we'll pretty much just end. And tomorrow I will have a demonstration for everybody as far as it pertains the uh, to the paper project that you're supposed to do and I'm going to be showing how I'm going to be transferring or turning my paper into what I actually pl uh, plan on bringing out of my mind. So we will continue tomorrow and I'll see you all. Don't forget if you're not able to join us tomorrow you still have the project and my name is Kimberly Wright. Thanks once again for joining us for another edition of Handbuilt pottery and sculpture. I love you all. Have a blessed day. Love you, Kim. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you so much, Kimmy. Thank love you, Kim. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Good sharing with you today. Bye. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you, baby. You too. Thank Bye -bye. you.